or make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye the Lord, he is God. Amen. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Please stand for our opening hymn, number 75. The wonder of his all, number 75. You don't think of George Beverly Shea, you, you folks may be too young to remember him, but he sang a lot with Billy Graham. And this was one of his big ones, big songs that he um, wrote. So let's sing this with um, all, all praise and gusto this morning. The wonder of it all, because you are a wonder. We're wonderfully made. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you, our God, our Savior, our Redeemer. Thank you, dear God, for everything you've done for us. We have not said thank you enough. Even when we see the sick, we have not said thank you enough. Even when we see the people dissipate from us. We have not said thank you enough. But we would like to say thank you to you today, oh God. We want to let you know that we love you, oh Lord. Thank you for such a great Sabbath day. Thank you for giving us this moment to just leave everything behind and make our statement that you are God in our lives. Oh, we ask you to please be here with us. This service is for you and we present it to you. Please be with us and assist us. Send your Holy Spirit upon us. We pray you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. 
Happy Sabbath and welcome. I always think you can do better. Happy Sabbath and welcome in the house of the Lord today. I pray that God be with you in the name of Jesus today. Uh, it's a nice and sunny day out. I hope you can see how the sun is beautiful. Yes, so um, I have a few, uh, just a few announcements. It says, uh, please continue to pray for all our sick members and all in need of prayers. So um, we have many sick members of Sterling SDA Church, those we know and those we don't know. Whatever you do, please pray for them so that God can visit them in a very special way. And please don't forget to pray for our Raymond family so that God can be a support for them, especially in this moment of um, Advent. And I would like to continue to extend a warm welcome to you today and may God bless you. Good morning. It's uh, time now for our worship and giving. And um, I wanted to share some words here on our revival. This was, these are some words that Ellen White wrote and um, I thought they were really very good, very appropriate for us today. It says, a revival of true godliness among us is the greatest and most urgent of all our needs. Revival is an invitation to turn away from other gods and acknowledge him as the sole Lord of our lives. Second Chronicles 29 to 31 tells us about the revival during the time of King Hezekiah. The temple was, pre was repaired the worship services were restored. Passover was celebrated once again. Levites were reinstalled to ministry. Restoration of true worship was at the heart of true revival. Hmm. I'd like to ask our deacons, deaconess to stand as we word a prayer. Our kind Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much for your many mercies. We thank you, Lord, for providing uh, for our individual needs as you have once again so faithfully this past week. We uh, ask, Lord, that you would um, bless these tithes and offerings. We pray, Lord, that uh, we would be uh, faithful in our support of your world church, Lord, but our local church, too. We We thank you, Lord, again for, um, for, for the way that you lead us day by day. And um, we again ask, Lord, for the presence of your Holy Spirit in this place. In thy name, amen. amen.
Our children's story will be done by our brother Cabo All Waters. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Today, our children's story is entitled uh, God Answers Prayers. And this story is about a gentleman by the, uh, we'll call him Mr. Ray. And uh, he lives in a, very far from here, in a, a city called Bangkok, and it's in Thailand. Uh, Mr. Ray lived with his family, and he owned a business, um, and his business wasn't doing too well. Uh, he sold uh, T-shirts, and uh, he had a house full of shirts, which he took to the market every day to sell, to earn enough money to feed his family. But uh, when business was slow, it was a struggle for him to take care of his family. So he became very discouraged during this time, and uh, this made him sad. Right about this time, when his business was struggling, the Thailand Adventist Mission purchased a building right in Mr. Ray's neighborhood. And the pastor of the church uh, did Bible uh, uh, sessions, and he also taught English classes to the people in the local community. They also began to have Sabbath worship at the mission uh, building in the, in the city. One day as the pastor was visiting the people around the neighborhood, he knocked on Mr. Ray's door, and the pastor invited Mr. Ray to church and asked him if he could pray for him and his family. Now, Mr. Ray was not a Seventh-day Adventist, so he was reluctant to have the pastor pray for him, and in fact, he didn't want anything to do with Christians. So he asked the pastor to leave, which he did, and uh, the pastor decided to continue to pray for him and his family. That very same night, Mr. Ray had a dream. It was a strange dream, and he saw the pastor in his dream and the church that the pastor preached at, and it was surrounded by light, and around this light there was darkness, and it made him very scared. He didn't know how to interpret the dream, but the very next morning he called the pastor, and he visited the pastor to explain to him what he dreamt about the night before. And he told the pastor at that time he wanted to learn more about Jesus, and he asked the pastor if he could pray for him. So the pastor said a prayer for him, and it made him feel better. He left feeling peaceful, and he went to the market that very same day to continue selling his shirts, and guess what happened? He sold not only one shirt, not only two, but he sold all of the shirts that he took to the market that day. He was so excited that he couldn't believe it. He came back to tell the pastor the good news and how well he did that day and to thank the pastor for praying for him and his family and also thank to, thanking God for answering his prayers. Through that experience, Mr. Ray learned an important truth about God. And this is that God wants us to be, God wants to bless us in un unimaginable ways. He wants to provide for our every needs to fill us with his love. But we, we need to trust him. We need to listen to him and ask him to help us. Mr. Ray did not even know Jesus but he recognized how God of the universe answered the pastor's prayer. He saw how blessed he, he was and how Jesus worked in his life. Because of this, he wanted to get to know more about Jesus for himself, which he did. In fact, he accepted Jesus as his Savior and Lord. He's now a baptized member of the little church in his community in Bangkok, Thailand. He has not missed a ch uh, church service ever since that time the pastor prayed for him. He continues to sell his shirts in the market and every day falls more in love with the only God who can answer prayers. 
and now he tells everyone about God. So boys and girls, the lesson in this story is that you too can pray for someone who doesn't know about Jesus, just like the pastor did for Mr. Ray. And when you do, you can watch how God changed their life through the power of his love. Would anyone like to pray? Dear Lord, um, thank you for this day and all that you give us. Hope that we have a wonderful day. Um, please bless us and be with everybody here, be with everybody on their travels to other places. Please be with um, everybody's families as they travel um, and and be with other people that sin. Please turn the other. Please hope, we all hope that um, people turn to you and Jesus name, amen. 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 amen, thank you. Good morning church, happy Sabbath. It's, it's time now for the pastoral prayer. Let's, let's kneel down and let's pray. Dear God, our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, O Lord. Thank you so much, Lord, for the privilege to be here in your house, to be with my brothers and sisters, Lord. We want to praise your name, to glorify your name through our deeds. And we ask you, Lord, to bless us all together as individuals and as a church family. You know the desires of our hearts, Lord. You know also what bothers us. And we ask you, Lord, to please bless us and to, to put your hand upon us, Lord. We need your help, we need you in our lives. You heard the prayer request from his friend. She is going through a very serious health issue, brain tumor. Lord, be with her. Be with her family. We ask you this, Lord, because we know you are capable of everything. And I ask you to be with her and to be with the friends in the hospital also, Lord. Sometimes we don't know what to say or what to do, but you know, Lord, what she needs. We put her in your hands, Lord, asking you to be with her. And also, Lord, we want to place Sue Raymond, the family, Raymond family, Lord. Even though we know that you, you took care already of this death situation for us, he said, to see someone else in our family to go. We ask you to comfort the family, to comfort Sue, and to be with her. Lord, we ask your blessings upon Laisha as she start a new life in college. 
that she can see you there, Lord, and that she can feel your love and care for her. And may the desire of her heart to go through school be fulfilled, Lord, with your blessings. And I thank you so much for Isadora. She is having a nice and safe travels. And I thank you for your care for her and for all of us here. And Lord, I mentioned Alvaro. Uh, you know what's going on in his life and what is, is going through his mind. Place him in your hands because you know the best for him. And another praise I, want, I lift up to you, Lord, is Elio's friend. Because of one friend visiting another friend, they are together going to visit your house. May they find you there, Lord. May your Holy Spirit work through this uh, good situation and that they can find you there in in your house. May your Holy Spirit work in their hearts. You know that there are some, a lot of uh, challenges for them. And you know Elio liked them, like his friends so much and he he's meeting the other friend. And may they all together get friendship with you. Lord, we praise your name and we ask your blessings upon our lives. And thank you so much for everything you have done for us, Lord. Bless the Sterling Church, bless each family here, and help us to always walk with you. We place our lives in your hands, and we ask your blessings in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Okay, we're going to do the motions, I think, too, okay? Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Okay, let's all sing this one, okay? We know it. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. I'll keep, just keep it bubbling over. Amen. Uh, now is scripture reading. The scripture reading is found in Lamentations 3, uh, 22 and 23. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Happy Sabbath, church. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord and uh, it's good to praise his name. Deep and wide as a flaunt. <laughs> Flowing deep and wide is God loves for us. And uh, like the, the sermon title is The Love of God. How wonderful it is to know that we have a God who loves us. You know, uh, Jackie, I got a little message from Jackie as Sabbath school teacher today. When she, I got this, like when she mentioned how hard it is 
for you, for a person that doesn't know God and goes through hardship, how hard it is. We don't know it because we born and raised, even though not being a Seventh-day Adventist, but Christian. We always heard about God, always heard about Jesus. Even though we heard about God, and sometimes, a lot of times, like my mother used to say to us, God is watching you. <laughs> oh, you be careful what you do. You know, God is looking at you and he's going to get mad on you. you know, even though being like that, we knew there was some superior than us that we could, could count on. It is good to know that, right? Can you imagine a, a, a kid without a father or a mother that they never met and cannot count on that person? It is a very hard situation. And can you think about it like Keep it, get in your mind like God created the world. God himself, you know. He came down. Uh, he, he said, you know, things. Like he called for light and light, light showed up. But as he was creating the world, the earth, he created the man with his hand, you know. He created, and as he was creating, creating man, he was all there, you know, with the thinking. If this man choose, you know, what he's not supposed to choose, I'll say, I love this creation. And I am provided already a solution. And uh, like before Adam and Eve commit a sin, he already had all the plans. And he said, you're going to have hardship. You're going to have a hard time. You have to work. You have to, you know, go through this, through that. All those situations. But my, I will be with you. And I am here with you, and I will go through every situation in your lives. You could think of that, well, it could, could be fast, you know, could be just some years, but still here, we are here, and it is a long time in our minds. But as the Bible says, for us, a year or ten years, thousand years is the like forever, but for God a thousand years is like a, a day, you know? And we can't count, we can't co comprehend, but we have God on our side. Doesn't matter what happens, we have God in our sides, in our side. And we have to be, to, to practice the faith, and to practice, practice this faith in God Thank you so much, Lord, for the, your word that he, God placed his word in our hands. And we have a lot of uh, ways and form to read it, you know. And ab talking about God's lo God loves towards us, his love to us. With the situation that we live and the way the world is going, it's easy, it's easy to get frustrated or to forget and to feel you are alone, to feel you are, wow, am I left here with this situation? 
and it's easy to forget. But if you keep studying your, the word, like I think it was mentioned in the Sabbath school, you know, you study the word of God and you're gonna find his love to you right there, right close to you, right? Even the cell phone, this is smartphone, is very good because you can choose the language, you can choose, you know, the versions and everything. You can see the God love through his word and through, through nature. It's just a matter of taking the time and connected to him through his word. And there are many ways us, between us, we can uh, express love to each other. You know, love for one another. For some, I can say, for some, it's just the way to show the love is taking the trash out in a very hard, cold day, you know, taking care of plants, you know, taking care of uh, something for you. It shows a, the person care, the person love you, you know. Uh, for, for other, love is expressed in more direct ways, such as by reciting romantic poems or outright saying, I love you. And for those who believe in God and follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, love takes on a whole new meaning. The best Bible verses about God's love prove that even in your darkest hours, hour, when it may seem like you are on your own or that you are lost, that you lost everyone or everything you, you have uh, ever, you know, God cares and God see you through. He is always there and you are never alone. This is what the Bible points you to. You are never alone. God's immense and unwavering love isn't always easy to see or to understand. Is that right? It is not easy. Sometimes it shows itself in small ways, like when a person asks how your day is going, and actually listen when you answer. Just taking a little time to listen, you know? It shows itself in a big ways also. Like when a guardian angel appears out of nowhere when your car stops running and you need someone to restart it. Have it happened to you? One day I was uh, in Maine, six hours, about almost four hours, five hours from here with my brother and uh, somehow he rented a, a truck and the truck, the gas went down, down, down until the, the lights showed up and he said, I'll find a, a, a gas station here and he went to one, one way that was in the middle of now, nowhere, nothing to see and drove a lot and decided, no, it's the wrong way, and he decided to go back to the highway, and the gas was gone, and it was Friday about six o'clock. 
getting dark was uh, starting the winter. And sometimes uh, one car passed by but never stopped. But in about half an hour we were there, one guy st stopped. He was driving fast, went like this, and suddenly he returned and came back. And said, are you out of gas? Like this, are you out of gas? He said, my, my brother, yes. And he said, okay, you're, you're lucky day. And he went on his trunk, got two five gallons wow. containers, gave to us, and, and my brother said, oh, can I pay you? How, how are we gonna do this? He said, no, you keep the containers, use the gas, and do it to somebody else. And left. You know, isn't it God's way to... This, I keep this in my mind, and it's a good idea, you know. Two five gallons gave to us and said, do to some, the same thing to someone else. That's it. It's a, a garden angel, you know, to restart your car. Bible verses about God's love serve as a constant reminder that he is always watching and ready to help. And they will allow you to take comfort in the fact that he is always in your corner. Yeah, we have to have that in mind. You know, it's, it's uh, a lot of uh, bad things that happens in our lives that we don't know. Why, what is the purpose of me being here? What is the purpose of this happening to me? Why is that happening to me? How, how come I'm being a very good person and this happens to me? It is easy to have these questions in our minds, but we have to remind ourselves about God's love towards us and that he is always in your corner. You know, like the scripture reading for today, Lamentations 3, 22. I did separate uh, with the help of Itanilda uh, 22 Bible verses about God's love for us and how it can apply in your life. But you can have your thinking about those Bible verses and you can apply in your life on the way you think is the best. You know, Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. Look what it says. It's our, our scripture reading. Certainly the faithful love of the Lord hasn't ended. Certainly God's compassion isn't through. Uh, they are renewed every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God's heart overflow of love, and He can and we can depend on Him to love us just as much every day. This is how God's love for us, we can count on him just as much every day, you know, every day in our lives, God is there. And, it, and his love never ended. It's not like you go to a certain place or a certain type of food, you know, and you start eating and that food is gone. God's love, is always there. Psalm 63, verse 3. Listen to this. My lips praise you because your faithful love is better than life itself. See how David felt about God? Was his relationship with God that, you know, brought him to think of like that? 
My lips praise you because your faithful love is better than life itself. Anyone who believes and praises him, Sabbath school lesson was saying about praising God in any situation, right? Anyone who believes and praises him will be rewarded with a love that's, that's sweeter than anything given than life. Because God, God, he offers us uh, eternal life. You know, John 13, 34, and 35. Look what it says. John 13, 34, and 35. I give you a new commandment. I, I give you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you, so you also must love each other. This is how everyone will know that you are my disciples when you love each other. It's God saying, hey, I love you. Show that to someone else. Show that to someone else. The same way I love you, you can do that. If you welcome God's love into your heart, then you will be able to love like God too. The love of God will be visible in your life. John 1, verse 20 and 20, 21. But you, dear friends, build each other up on the foundation of your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep each other in the love of God. Wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will give you eternal life. Through God's unwavering love, we are granted eternal life as long as we keep the faith. Keep the faith. So let's be faithful to God. Isaiah 54, verse 10. The mountains may shift and the hills may be shaken, but my faithful love won't shift from you. And my covenant of peace won't be shaken, says the Lord, the one who pities you. No matter how the world changes around us, he is always there, guiding us through it all. Psalm 86, 15, Psalm 86, 15 says, but you, my Lord, are a God of compassion and mercy. You are very patient and full of faithful love. Isn't it? God is not very patient to us, towards us. You know? But you, my Lord, you are a God of compassion and mercy. You are very patient and full of faithful love. The good news on this Bible verse is, we will make mistakes, but just like the people in our lives who love us unconditionally, God will give us grace and forgiveness. Sophonia 3.17, The Lord your God is in your midst a warrior bringing victory. He will cre create calm with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. The Lord is your biggest supporter. When you succeed, he succeeds. He is always cheering you on. No. Keep up the faith. Trust me. And I'll take care of you. Come on, you can do it. Look at the birds. 
I can feed them, I can feed you. I take care of the little plants coming out of the ground. After the whole winter on top of it, all the ice and everything, I can take care of you. You know? First John 3, verse 1. See what kind of love the Father has given to us in that we should be called God's children and that it is, and that is what we are. Because the world didn't recognize him, it does recognize us. But we are called children of, children of God. What a blessing it is to be considered one of his children, who he loves the same way and any parent loves their children. Deuteronomy, 7 9. Know now then that the Lord our your God is the only true God. He is the faithful God who keeps the covenant and proves loyal to everyone who loves him and keeps his command his commands even to the thousands generation. No. God will protect his children for eternity after eternity with his forever unwavering love. Ephesians 3, 18 to 19. I ask that you will have the power to grasp, to grasp love's width, length, height, height, and depth together with all believers. I ask that you will know the love of Christ that is beyond knowledge, so that you will be filled entirely with the fullness of God. Isn't it those Bible verses like comforting and lifting you up? You know, this is the way God wants us to live, with his comfort. With his, his uh, with certainty in our in our hearts that he is there for us, because God loves you so much, you are also capable of loving deeper and stronger ways each day. Psalm five verse eleven to and twelve, but let all who take refuge in you celebrate. Let them sing out loud forever. Protect them so that all who love your name can rejoice in you. Because you, Lord, blesses, bless the righteous. You cover them with favor like a shield. You can see here that those who believe in him, in God, and follow his teachings are guaranteed his shield and can sleep knowing that they are never alone. Never alone. Ephesians 1, verse 5 and 6. God destined us to be his adopted children through Jesus Christ because of his love. This was according to his good will and plan and to honor his glorious grace that he has given to us freely through the son who love who him who he loves so God gave us gave his love and showed his love for us regardless of our relationship with you, regardless of your relationship with your biological parents, you can take comfort in the fact that you are one of God's children, regardless of that. First Chronicles 16.34 says, Give thanks to the Lord because he is good, because his faithful love endures forever. Thank you. 
be eternally grateful because the Lord is always with you. We have to keep in our minds, we have to, you know, add each day to our minds, to us. Bible verses, God's word that assured us of his constant presence in our lives, his protections, his shield, you know, covering us in this world full of sin that anything bad can happen anytime. Psalm 107 verse 8 and 9 says, let them thank the Lord for his faithful love and his wondrous works for all people, because God satisfied the one who was parched with thirst, and he filled up the hungry with good things. God will provide for his followers when they need it the most, even when they don't even realize it. Having it, have it happened in your life? Have you seen it? I have seen it. And I have felt how God took care of us here. First John 4, verse 7 and 8. Dear friends, let's love each other because love is from God. And everyone who loves is born from God and knows God. The person who doesn't love doesn't know God because God is, God is love. God's very essence is love. When we love one another, we are fulfilling God's most fundamental wish for our lives. is to take care, of, take care of each other, to love each other. And how can we show that love if we don't learn how to love? With the one who is entirely love, who took care of us even we didn't exist who thought of us today here. Second Chronicles 6, 14, he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven on, or on the earth. You keep the covenant and show loyalty to your servants who walk before you with all their heart. As it was for the Israelites of old, the love of our God is never failing. It shows up to you today. You know, we can count on God in our sight. Romans 8, verse 31 and 32. So what are you going to say about these things? If God is for us who is against us. He didn't spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Won't he also freely give us all things with him? Isn't it a wonderful Bible verse? It assures you, you know, No matter how your enemies gather against you, if God is on your side, you have nothing to fear. And you can feel God's love right there, you know, right there with you. Psalm, look what Psalm, Psalm 36, 7 says. I even put a mark here, very, you know, to Show this up for me. Your faithful love is priceless, God. 
Humanity finds refuge, refuge in the shadow of your wings. There is room, we can see there is room for all of us beneath the protective wings of the Lord. When we, when I was young, small, little kid, my mom used to have a lot of chickens. And when, when it was start raining, or like raining a lot, and those, some of the chickens had those little chicks, you know, we could see all that rain there and sh the chick like this with all the little ones under that and you know the, the, the rain pouring down pouring down the chick like that can you see God like that in your life we have to praise God for that you know and you know the little animal like a chicken if you pay attention on them and how they live how you know, how they know these are my little ones and I have to protect, I have to cover it. This is dangerous for them. Can you imagine God who created you? Galatians 2 verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I know, that I now live, in my body, I live by, by faith. We have to practice our faith in God and know that he is capable to protect us, to guide us. Indeed, by faithfulness of God's Son who loves me and gave himself for me. This is the end of the 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 Bible verse. He gave his son, you know, for us. The sacrifice of Jesus on the cross was God's love made manifest. And as a Christians, we share in the crucifixion and the resurrection that followed. And thank God for that. Thank God for this gift. Jesus Christ came in from coming from heaven and died for us. You know, and now he can he lives in us and we can share, you know, on his resurrection also. You know, we can have eternal life through him. Psalm 109, verse 21. But you, Lord, my Lord, act on my behalf for the sake of your name. Deliver me because your faithful love is so good. See how David could express the knowledge that he had about God's love for him? Your faithful love is so good. God is ever available and ready to source uh, of help in times of trouble. 1 John 4, verse 9 and 10, This is how the love of God is revealed to us. God has sent His only Son into the world so that we can live through Him. This is love. It is not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as the sacrifice that deals with our sins. God, God loves. God loved you first before you were even born. And the proof is the life of our Savior Jesus Christ, who came to free us from the bondage of sin. Micah 7, 18, Micah 7.18 says, Who is a God like you? 
pardoning iniquity, overlooking the sins, uh, the sin of the few remaining for his in inheritance. He doesn't hold on to his anger forever. He delights in faithful love. Our God is a God of forgiveness, even willing to offer us a chance at redemption. It is never too late. It is never too late for us. Romans 5, verse 5. This hope doesn't put us to shame because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. God's love justifies our lives and fills us with hope for the future. John 3 verse 16 John 3 verse 16, 16 God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish but will have what? Eternal life. Even death has no dominion over those who love and are loved by the Lord. Romans 8, 28. We know that God works all things together for good for the ones who love God, those who are called according to his purpose. With God's love in our hearts, all our actions will be directed toward good. Like I said in the, in the beginning, people will see it. We will show God's love in our lives. It's just uh, we have to dedicate ourselves to him. Whoever has, look, John 14, 21, whoever has my commandments and keeps them loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Our love for Jesus, the Son, is answered by divine love and care from Father and Son alike. It's a connection between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, you know, and as we practice this love that Jesus showed us, you know, it will be showing, shown through our lives to our, the way we live. Romans 8, 30, 38 and 39, I am convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not what? Not death or life. Not angels or rulers. Not present things or future things. Not powers or height or depth or other things that is created. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. There is nothing in our, in our future, not even in our own death, that can keep us from the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is very important for us to, to know God like that. It is very important. John 15, 9, As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Remain in my love. What a good uh, request of Jesus, huh? Remain in my love. Jesus loved us just as God the Father loved him. In this truth, we can rest secure and at peace.
Romans 5 verse 8. But God shows his love for us because while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Though we be sinners, Christ sacrificed his life and suffered on the cross for us. There is no greater love than that, you know, to sacrifice himself in the cross. Those last three Bible verses that I have is right here. And we can see how God takes care of us. The Father himself loves you because you have loved me and believed that I came from God. Faith and love go hand in hand and does our love for God and his love for us. It's just us to dedicate ourselves, you know. Who will separate? Look what Romans, Romans 8, 35 says. Who will separate us from Christ's love? Will we be separated by trouble or distress? or har uh, harassment, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. There is no calamity, physical or emotional, that can separate us from the love of, of our Lord. We can see in this Bible verse, nothing can separate us from the love of God. And look, the last Bible verse, Ephesians 2, verse 4 and 5. However, God is rich in mercy. He brought us to life with Christ while we were dead as a result of those things that we did wrong. He did this because of the great love that he has for us. You are saved by God's grace. Our God, our God of love is also a God of life. In our faith, we can we come alive and exist joyfully. No. We have to practice our faith. We have to dedicate ourselves. Let's keep the love of God in our heart and be faithful to him to the end of our lives, no matter what, no matter what happens. May God give you peace and may God give you knowledge of his word and strength on his word. Let's thank the Lord singing together the hymn number 528. Let's praise him and thank him for his love and care for us that never ends, you know. 528.
shelter in the time of storm. We find in God a safe retreat, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cooling shade on the burning sand, faithful Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your love and for your care for us. Thank you, Lord, for being our refuge, our protector, and for being our guide. Thank you so much. We praise your name in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen.